Welcome into the latest edition then of Extra Time. Thank you very much, as always, for your questions. Ali is here, as is Shaka. We welcome Nadem as well. Uh, Nadem looking very festive. Just a lot of Christmas decorations yeah. in the background. Yep. Really prepared, it uh -huh. seems, uh, for the holidays coming up. <laughs> well, you know, let's not worry about that. A, you can make an effort, Nadem. That's right. <laughs> A little bit of tinsel or something on Jimi Hendrix. No, there's stuff all around me. There's yeah, okay. stuff all around me. I'm just no, yeah. trying to try. no, this is no, business. No, it's this is business, yeah. yeah. You just have to imagine it. Yeah. Nadam, there, there's something Grinch-like about your personality in general. I'm just wondering if that resonates throughout Christmas. Uh, no, not really. Uh, one sec. Oh, oh, oh. 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 <laughs> that is the least, yeah. the least looking Christmas <laughs> nutcracker you've ever seen in your life. Oh, goodness. Is that a nutcracker? Where did you get that from? <laughs> what was it doing? <laughs> oh, man. It's just, all I've the got all the stuff around me, honestly. I take, Nadam, I take Christmas oh, very seriously. Nadam, you've got to show us. How <laughs> easy, how, bland one. Yeah. How easy yeah. is it to show us? <laughs> We want to see now. The, the monotone the, um, nutcracker. Can you move the camera? Uh, no, no, He's I not. can't. There's too much to reveal. No, I can't yeah. say too much. It's the biggest, biggest there is nothing. Oh, there is nothing. Man. Okay, can't here we go. Much. Right, get, get on can't with your questions. Much. Come on. It, right. Dan said that Hazard is one of the worst Real Madrid signings of all time. As he didn't specify player signings, how does the FC panel rate Dan's time at Real Madrid? <laughs> 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 I tell you what. <laughs> I, I, I rate it as highly as his Spanish. Oh, um, that's not very nice. I, was, yeah, I didn't say anything about his Spanish. I just said I rate it as highly as your Spanish. Uh, how is your Spanish? Terrible. You've seen me in Spanish. Well, I know, but I want your assessment. I know what my assessment is. My, my level of Spanish is that I had to lie how long I'd been in Spain. Okay. Otherwise, people would get very judgy. Because they go, you've been here five years, and that's all you can do. <laughs> I, I, I can relate to that feeling of being judged of your Spanish. Oh, yes, exactly. But I could, you know, I could order beer, I could ask a girl out. What more do you need in life? Proper. Well, Apparently not much. How were, how were your Christmas decorations while you were in Spain? <laughs> they were definitely... I think Nadam's got one more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, um, do the pundits ever want to do to Dan what Kunde just did? <laughs> Stevie would want to yeah. throw a ball in my face the most, I'd yeah. imagine. I think mm. so. out of it. No. Yeah? I enjoy your company, Dan. Uh, well, well, thank you very much, Ali. I'm glad somebody does. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take advantage of you that way, Dan. No? Yeah. I hurt my head like Paul Jordi Alva, getting a ball thrown in his face. <laughs> for Ali. Other than scoring goals, mm. what is the most important attribute for a modern-day striker to have? Well, movement of the ball, but when you say modern-day striker, it is... Sometimes it is amazing to see how little of the hold-up play part strikers are doing nowadays. Right. The, the playing with your back to goal part of the game that when I was growing up, it was, it was a basic thing. You had to do that so that you could bring the rest of the team with you. Now, because you have so many of these sort of hybrid strikers or false nines or whatever, they're doing everything else other than that part of the game. And it's something that I think teams would certainly benefit from in having a player that can hold the ball up and then you can have all the little guys running around him. Right. All those underneath players that can run around that guy. But the hold up plays, I think, is a part of the game that is overlooked now by strikers. Nadam, did the media ever report false news about you? What was your reaction when you found out? Um, there was only there was only one clear time that I remember, and it was when I was at Queens Park Rangers, and they were asking me about Phil Foden. So this was like three years ago, and they were saying everyone's saying that he needs to leave, you know, to get some game time and whatever. And I was thinking, well, at the end of the day, you know, he's very good. If City want to keep him, that's great. But if they do let him go on loan, then you know, maybe this type of club would be good for him, maybe Spurs or something like that. So then the next day the headline came out that I said Phil Foden needs to say he leaves to leave Man City and go sign for Spurs. And I was like, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> I was on the phone to all the City contacts like, no, 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 no. That's, that's not me, that's not me. And thankfully nobody listened and nobody cared because he's ended up being not too bad a player for City in the meantime. It's lucky your opinion is irrelevant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you should know. You should know all about it as well. <laughs> That's it. Shaka, you had a story, didn't you? Didn't someone print something in the newspaper about you? And you got angry about it? Well, recently? No, in the past. Oh, nice. oh. easy, Shaq. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. Uh, what's been pre recently? What no, no. Uh, recent, so recently, similar to, to what Nedham was, was talking about, it was after the um, Champions League final that Liverpool lost to Real Madrid. I was doing, I was doing a, a radio, one of the British radio, radio stations, and they asked. The question was, try to explain. What Carrius was doing when he, when he threw the ball and ah, yeah. who cut it? Who just cut it out? It was Benzema. Uh -huh. yes. And I said the only way I can explain that is that Jurgen Klopp says to, to everybody in Liverpool, get the ball back into play quickly. Right. Let's just keep this tempo as high as possible and where where Real Madrid don't. Um, that's what I said on the radio. The Mirror took that and said that the Mirror newspaper, Mirror newspaper in, in England said that I said it's Klopp's fault that Karius made that mistake. Oh. That Klopp is the one. That's what you kind of are saying. That's, that's what you were, that's what you... Somebody get me a ball, let me, <laughs> let me throw it. That's kind of what you're alluding to, yeah? Because you're saying Klopp's tactics <laughs> led Karius to that mistake. That, that's not at all what I'm saying, mirror journalist you. <laughs> what? That's what it sounds like. Now, it's a, by the way, your concept of reason, that's years ago, Jack. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. Okay, I'm just... Who said something that got I me I thought angry? there was another story in the newspaper that when you were playing for Newcastle. Oh. Uh, there, there was there was one, there was oh. 98 Dwight York had a party and they reported that I was there. It was, <laughs> it, it was easy, it was, so it was easy to prove because that, that was the year that Newcastle got to the FA Cup final. Right. So it was the week between the end of the season and yep. the FA Cup final and Newcastle spent the, the, the week in hotel in, in, in London for, right. the, for the final. You could have left the hotel and gone to the party. I, I, I was present <laughs> and accounted why for. Was the, why one. was the party at your house? <laughs> <laughs> I was present <laughs> and accounted for. And the newspaper who ran that article printed a retractment and donated £2,000 to a children's hospital in oh. London. There you so, go. Well, See, there you are, Shaq. But, but why would anybody think that you were at a party? I, I have no idea. I, I was I mean, comfortably in the hotel. Naden, with so many games coming up in a short space of time, how do you recover mentally and physically within 48 hours? Drink. <laughs> what? All right, enough about your party. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think, um, I think football's reached a point where older people with the power, say the sports scientists and all that stuff, they give you the best chance you can. You know, they're good at managing uh, workloads and stuff in terms of training giving you ideas of what you should be doing to try and recover. And you just, you know it's coming. You know, this winter period isn't a surprise. So I think from once you experience it one time, you know what to expect the next time and you just find a way to get through it. And at this stage, really, you train a lot less and you just get ready to play games. And for some, that's a good thing because I know plenty of people that hate training but just love going out there on a Saturday. So as I say, come winter time, just get out there, win some games and see if you can enjoy yourself. Uh, what's the coldest game you've ever played in, Shaq? Oh, um... I don't know. I, I'm Ali? Preseason against uh, FC Dallas, there was a ice storm in Dallas. Oh, I was with Houston Dynamo at the time. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah. I've, I've told you the story before. I was facing the wind. I got snot all over my face Ew. and it's frozen on my your, face. Oh. Huh? Your, your snot or something? Yeah, yeah, I hope it was mine. <laughs> Just I sure hope it was snot. mine. <laughs> <laughs> mm, lovely. Yeah, that was... Nathan, the coldest game you've played in? Um, there's potentially two. 2019 playoffs against Portland at the uh, at Rio Tinto, and the wind was so strong in Chile, and it's, and like there was ice on the field, and it was just gathering in my uh, in my cleats, as you guys would say. And then the last year, the last game of my career against Kansas uh, Sporting Kansas City, November, and the snow was so bad you couldn't see across the field. And it was basically just a case of just playing the game because there's no other window to play it. Wow. Because otherwise, you know, there's no way on on God's earth it should have gone ahead. Sounds fun. Yeah. In a Real Salt Lake uh, Sporting Kansas City final in Kansas City, yes. where we were covering for ESPN, yes. I have never been so cold in my life. I mean, this, I don't know how the players were doing it out on the field and, and how we were supposed to break it down. Well, no surprise to anybody, it was 0 0, and yes. it could have been 0 0 forever, went to penalties, and then the penalties went to like 10 penalties. It was ridiculous. <laughs> All I wanted to do was get in a car and go back to the hotel. Okay. When we were about to fly back, 
a uh, snowstorm in Philadelphia. Got stranded. It was a great weekend for everybody. Wow. Yep. Uh, Coldest? Um, I'm not sure if it was, it was actually cold, but certainly felt that way. We played to 2007 season with, with Dallas. Opening game of the season, we were away to, to Galaxy. Mm. And then the second game, we flew back across the country. We played against uh, New York Red Bull. Okay. But Norista came in. Right. So we go from the warmth of LA yep. to the absolute freezing cold, albeit in, in March of New York. Two players had to leave the pitch at halftime with hypothermia. Wow. Were you in uh, tracky bottoms? No, I was in shorts. I was tough. Wow, Shank. Yeah, you, no I'm, tights or anything? I'm really tough, Dan. OK. Now, tough now I, I know that's a lie, so there you yeah. go. Move on. Tough or stupid? What? Why would you not just put some trousers on? Just tough. Uh, Ali, what about this for a question? Blooming heck. Who is the best South American Deadpool specialist of all time? Oof. Wow, that's easy. Easy. Oh, I oh. thought it was hell. No, no, no. no. Bring, bring, bring that camera to me. I'm going to tell you. Oh, no. He's not going to take Juan Arango. Juan Arango. Juan Arango. No. Juan Arango. Juan Arango. Vamos, Venezuela! No. Well, you think I'm going to say somebody else? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Juan Arango. Anybody who's seen Juan Arango take a free kick. Even 15 years later, we, we, we play that. Uh, yeah. Janino was better at free kicks, though. Than Juan Arango? Yes. No. Yeah, his record was much better. No. No, I'm not buying it. What is the best stadium that you played in in MLS? Mm. And which is the worst? Nadem? Mm. Uh, the one I enjoyed the most, because it felt very familiar in terms of atmosphere and so on, was uh, Providence Park in Portland. I think they've got a nice sort of soccer culture there. And it's a, it's a big stadium, especially with the stand they've redeveloped. And that, that place can be rocking and it always makes for a good occasion. And as for the worst, um, if we're talking about football, soccer specific, I think it has to be Vancouver's because the field wasn't even flat, even though it was turf. And it just <laughs> felt really weird with a big uh, jumbotron right in the middle of the field as well. You kept thinking, if you kick this high enough, it might just hit that <laughs> and come back down. And that's not really a feeling I've ever thought I'd feel when I was playing soccer. Did you play at Yankee Stadium? That must have been weird as well, Name. I didn't play there, as you know. I didn't play there. Good, glad I brought that up. Uh, uh, I agree with Nato in that the environment and the atmosphere of Providence Park in Portland, I think, is one of a kind. I would say that the worst, man, there are a few for, from all school MLS, there are a few. Uh, Cardinal Stadium in uh, Naperville, Illinois, when they were working on Soldier Field. Right. You go and play Chicago Fire. This was a D3 college. Oh, wow. And, and let me just tell you, the quality of the turf was, yes, uh, D3 college. Did you fall over more or less than that? Turf? Well, I, it, it was better not to fall <laughs> on that turf. Uh, Boxshaw Stadium in, in San Jose, which was essentially a, a baseball field. There was also a baseball field, a triple A AAA baseball field in Kansas City that we, that we played in. Oh. Uh, what else is there? Oh, and then, uh, of course, Dragon Stadium in South Lake Carroll in uh, high school in, in, in Dallas, where your feet were melting because it was too hot and the turf was, the end zones were black. And, okay, so that's not conducive to the no. best spectacle ever. So, yeah. Oh, lovely. Uh, final question, Shaq. I'm drawn to you. What's the worst excuse you ever gave to get out of training? Well, like York's party, uh -huh. one. I did not give that. Um... To get out of training? Yes. You once told me that a back was always a good way to go. Yeah, back, back seat. Because no one can really check your back. That's right. Yeah. I never had any real reason to just skip out in training. Pussy. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I'm waiting to see what the Daily Mirror has to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, uh, I'd prefer not to answer that question. Uh, Nadim, I can't imagine, you, you're quite professional, but I imagine you must have seen others come up with some interesting excuses. Yeah, I've, I've seen it all, I've seen it all, and I've heard some people who go out the night before to certain places, get themselves in some other situation, before you know there's a phone call coming in saying they feel a little bit under the weather and they can't possibly make it into work. Oh, there's been a, the car's broken down, all that stuff, I've, I've seen it. But for me personally, like I used to enjoy training, so I wasn't really seeking uh, any excuses no, to not go and do it. It's a good boy, yeah, Nadim, isn't he? I'm just a, just a great professional. That's all it is, Dan. You you, you wouldn't know about that. 
No, I'd be with, uh, Phil, I'd be with Phil Foden uh, and Jack Greenwood. Uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas. It could never be any more vague. I've seen people go to certain places <laughs> and get into certain situations. I think we can, all, we can all use our imaginations. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what he's talking about. And know. the British tabloids can connect the dots. <laughs> uh, that is it. Native, is this our last show together until it's Christmas? Um, yeah, so happy Christmas, happy holidays to everyone, and I'll be back next week, I'm sure. Oh, there we are, what a lovely promise that is. Hey, uh, I mean, is it, was it heartfelt? Uh, I, mean, uh, I don't, don't feel all that festive. It, it, uh, native, hell. native doesn't exude festive, does uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. The monotone nutcracker. <laughs> Why are you putting that face? <laughs> <laughs> that is it. <laughs> <laughs> the NFC is back on your screen Ooh, to, wow. tomorrow. Where's all the festive plants that we know? I don't know. We always budget, have those. Budget concerns. Uh, Craig, I think Craig burnt them. <laughs> uh, be sure to join us tomorrow. I'm off. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.